How you doing? Hey, 39 years ago, I walked into a therapist's office and I said, I'm gay. Why? <laughs> Why me? Uh, whose fault is it? What am I supposed to do about it? I want to look at three of the commonest answers we hear to that question, why is somebody gay? Because people are still asking that question today. But first, uh, I want to talk to you about subscription. Have you subscribed to this podcast yet? Well, if you've been watching it for a while, won't you consider doing that if you haven't subscribed? Love to have you be part of this community. It is a community. It's not just a weekly podcast. We're trying to build up some ongoing uh, communication want to keep you posted on upcoming projects and love to hear feedback from you as well as what topics you'd like to hear covered on this podcast, any feedback you have. Good, bad, or ugly, I want to hear from you. So please subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Okay, let's get personal. Why was I gay? Have you ever had a friend or a loved one uh, say, hey, whoa, I'm, yeah, I'm gay or I'm lesbian. And you know what? I didn't ask to be this way. I didn't choose this. I didn't even want this, but there's nothing I can do about it, so I guess God must have meant me to be this way. That's a, that's a pretty common sentiment. I used to feel that way myself, so uh, let's, let's try to clear the air on some of these reasons that people might be attracted to the same sex. Now, first of all, of course, when you talk about gay, what are you talking about? Well, you're talking about a combination of three things, the feelings you have, the actions you take, the identity you choose, one or a combination of those three, the feelings you have, the actions you take, or the identity you choose. Did I have anything to do with any of those when I identified as gay? Yeah, I chose a gay identity, 1978. I remember it very plainly. That's what, that's 45 years ago now. I made a decision. I'm gay. I will identify myself that way because it seemed like the only choice I had at the time. It seemed like the only choice I had. I chose a gay identity. That was a choice. I also chose the actions I was taking because I was tired of resisting the feelings I had. So I chose the identity after I had chosen the actions, homosexual behavior. But the feelings, no, I did not choose those. And that's where you get into that tricky question. Okay, why? I mean, why did I choose a gay identity? Because I thought it was the only choice I had. Why did I choose gay actions or homosexual behavior? I hate to say it, but because I wanted to, it seemed natural to me at the time, and I said I'm going to do it whether it's right or wrong. But why did I have those feelings? Well, okay, let's talk about three common theories, okay? The inborn theory, the developmental theory, and the demonic theory. Let's start with the inborn theory. That's the most popular, I think, these days. Inborn. Oh, why are people gay? Well, because they're born that way. Why else? Okay. Um, well, I will grant this much. We're born in sin, right? Psalm 51, 5, David said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, we're born sinners. We know that. I mean, doctrinally, we know from both the Old and the New Testament, as a race, we are born with a sinful condition. But uh, that's not the only thing people are talking about when they say they were born gay. They're, they're not saying they were born with sinful tendencies. They were saying they were born with this particular tendency. Now, that started, oh, around 1991. Now, before that, there were some people who felt that homosexuality was inborn. But by and large, that wasn't a widely accepted idea. All of that changed around November of 91. I remember this so clearly. A few different scientists, psychologists, and psychiatrists released some studies. Uh, Dr. Dean Hamer, for example, Dr. Simon LeVay, uh, Dr., um, uh, Drs. Pillard and Bailey. And um, all of them were basically saying they had found some evidence that homosexuality may be inborn, either by the brain structures they were uh, studying of homosexual men or um, uh, some, some uh, similarities among uh, identical twins. And so the studies were basically released cautiously. I mean, the, the men who promoted them and who, uh, or I shouldn't say promoted, but who released them, these researchers said, we have not proven homosexuality is inborn, but we are providing some evidence that there may be a genetic or hormonal link to that sexual orientation. That's what they said. That sure ain't the way the press picked it up. I, I remember the press had a feeding frenzy when they released, oh, new findings indicate gay men are born that way. 
And you know how it plays out when it gets into the spin cycle, okay? Uh, what's repeated often is assumed to be true. There were so many headlines saying new studies indicate that homosexuality is inborn. More and more people began saying it. More talking heads picked it up. It went through the academic circles and the media circles. And uh, pretty soon everybody was saying, hey, there it is. Proof positive homosexuality is inborn. And this is an unfortunate thing, but it's true. Um, how many times have you heard somebody say, well, they say such and such and such, as if the fact they say it, whoever they is, must mean that it's true. Now, in response to that, what I would say in response to the inborn theory is, well, no, that, that theory to this day has not been proven. It's uh, 2023. And seriously, you will not find any concrete proof that homosexuality is an inborn condition. None exist after all these decades of attempting to prove that it's an inborn condition. No. It ain't happened yet. It ain't happened. Could it ever happen? Um, well, I don't think it will. But I'm open to the possibility. I mean, there's some new study that, not study, but I mean research that absolutely shows through repeated replication that, yep, homosexuality is genetic. Um, would that change my position? No, it wouldn't change the biblical position at all. It would only reinforce what we already know. We are born imperfect. We are born with a sin nature, and that sin nature can show itself perhaps even in inborn tendencies. I mean, there's some pretty good research indicating that other tendencies, say the proclivity towards alcoholism or chemical dependency or violence or depression, may actually have genetic roots. It's a, it's a possibility. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But here's the bottom line. Inborn does not mean God-ordained. Inborn does not mean God ordained. If the inborn theory was proven to be true, that alone would not mean that homosexuality is something God intended. Because we know, according to Genesis 3, we are all created by God. We are not all God created us to be. Those are two very different things. That's the inborn theory. It's an easy answer to the question, why is somebody gay? I think it's a simplistic answer. I think ultimately it fails to be an accurate answer. Then there's the developmental theory, the developmental theory. And that, in essence, says that homosexuality is something acquired as somebody is developing, probably due to some early disruption or pathology in their early either family relationships or possibly relationships with others. So in that case, if that's true, homosexuality represents an unmet need that has taken on a sexual component. I'm simplifying it, but that's in essence what the theory says. Um, Proverbs 27.7 has an interesting thing to say about that. The full soul loatheth a honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Would you think about that for a minute? To the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Okay, personal story. I'm eight years old. I'm at a theater in downtown Long Beach, California. A man approaches me in the foyer, compliments me, starts talking me up, seems to be very interested in me, seems to like me. I was a lonely kid. I felt like I was not of much value and probably stupid and in the way and, you know, what have you. I was a very neurotic, mixed up kid. Here's a man who seems to like me. I was a hungry soul. When he ushered me into the restroom, waited till everybody left and then started to sexually molest me, I didn't cry out. I was scared. I was a little paralyzed. But there was something in that connection that made me feel like, well, this is really weird. I don't, I'm not sure if I like this, but hey, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. What would have caused another boy to run out of that room screaming caused me to stay. Why? Because I was a hungry soul. Now, a lot of people have theorized over the decades that, for example, in male homosexuality, there's a deficit in the father-son bond. That deficit leaves the boy hungry for male love, for male intimacy, which is a very normal need we have. We need, we need a father's love when we're boys. We need the love of our peers when we enter into, our, well, in our school days, in our adolescence. And, and even as adult men, I need, I need my male friends. Certainly I do. You know? So that's a normal need that in some cases takes on a sexual component, a sexualized need. Why does that happen in some people, not in others? We don't know. What we do know is, yeah, there is such a thing as a sexualized need. Uh, a young woman who's very hungry for affirmation she never got from her father. Yeah, in, in many cases, she'll turn out to be very promiscuous. What's she doing? She's looking for dad. 
What are a lot of gay men doing? In my opinion, just one man's opinion, a lot of them are looking for dead. Now, that's a, a theory that's got its roots in early psychoanalytic thought. It was popularized by Christian theorists uh, like Dr. Elizabeth Moberly and Dr. Joseph Nicolosi. And for a lot of us who have been through this in our own lives, those theories resonate. Well, if that theory is true, then the person who is attracted to the same sex will be called by God to repent of that sexual behavior, but not to repent of the emotional need, the need of the soul, which led to that behavior. You don't repent of needs. You just start trying to find legitimate ways to satisfy them. And let me say this, since I'm getting all personal with you, um, the big game changer for me, healthy relationships more than anything else. I had been seeking to satisfy a legitimate need through unhealthy relationships. I repented of that unhealthy way, but that wasn't enough. It's not enough to just leave Egypt. You got to go into Canaan. For me, Canaan was normal, healthy male to male relationships. Couldn't repent of that. Now, this theory, good as I think it is for some of us, it does not apply to all people. I've known openly gay men, and I've known men who've come to me for counseling who were not openly gay, but who struggled with this. They had wonderful fathers, early, healthy early relationships, no problems at all in that way. So let's not take any one theory and lay it on all people. But for me, yeah, that developmental theory, it, it, absolutely, uh, it absolutely applied. But again, a caution, not all origins are the same, not all outcomes are the same, okay? Not all people become attracted to the same sex for the same reason. And when they repent of that sin, not all of their outcomes are the same either. They may lose the attractions completely. They may lose them somewhat. They may not lose them at all, but God gives them grace to resist the sin. So origins and outcomes, let's not, let's not put them all in the same box. That leads to a final theory, a demonic theory. Homosexuality is an unclean spirit. I've heard a lot of people say that to this day. I think a lot of people believe it. Um, it's reminiscent of something Jesus said in Luke 13, 16, when he was healing a woman who was sort of stooped over. And he said, should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bounder? That was a case of Satan literally causing a bondage in someone's life, in that case, a physical one. A lot of people think that that's what happens to homosexual people. Some unclean spirit has either entered them or influenced them. I'm not entirely sold on that theory. Well, I'm not very sold on it at all. Homosexuality, I am convinced, is a problem of the soul, emotional brokenness, and a problem of the flesh, homosexual lust. Well, problems of the soul and problems of the flesh, those are not demonic, those are human problems. Now that said, does Satan have anything to do with all this? Of course he does. Satan rejoices in brokenness. You better believe it. Come on, you don't think he loves so much of what he's seen in 2023? So much brokenness, so much violence, so much heartache, so much confusion in every way. He loves that stuff, of course. And I should know he loves brokenness. He sure loved mine. Here's his MO. He questions, seduces, condemns, and confirms. Does all four of those babies. Questions, seduces, condemns, and confirms. Started with questioning. With me, it started with questioning, just like it did with Eve. As soon as he made an appearance in the garden, what does he do? He starts questioning, hath God said. That's what he did with me in 1978. Hath God said, Joe, are you really sure that homosexuality is wrong? And right when I heard that question, I started walking in the council of the ungodly. I started listening to secular theorists and secular voices. And I thought, yeah, maybe there's something they understand that the Bible doesn't really understand and the authors of the Bible didn't understand. Well, I was walking in the council of the ungodly, so I was more than willing to listen to Satan saying, hath God said? He questioned. Then he seduced. Seduced me with some primary thoughts. You didn't ask for this, Joe, poor you. You didn't ask for it. It's not your fault. Why should you say no to it when it's something completely involuntary? Because you're entitled to fulfillment. He sure seduced me with that thought too. You're entitled. You didn't ask for it, but you're entitled to indulge it. God wants you happy, surely. And if he doesn't, he's not a very good God to serve. You're entitled to fulfillment. You should at least give it a try. At least see if it's what you really want. And then if it's not what you really want, no harm, no foul. Come on. You know, he seduced me with of course, once I gave into it, gave myself permission to commit the first homosexual act I committed as an adult, you know what he did? He turned from the seducer to the condemner. He condemned. 
Now you've done it. Look at that. You've gone too far. Forget the grace of God. Forget the church. Forget your friends. You're out. You're condemned. And then he finally confirmed. See, there's no way out. You're gay. That's it. So you may as well go whole hog. Yeah, that was a lot of the work of Satan in my own life. So I believe that while the demonic theory of origin is not necessarily true on the surface, it has some truth to it. Now, let me tell you this. I think all three of those theories have some truth to them. So let me offer my own answer to the question of why was I gay and why do people tend to become gay? What tends to happen in their lives? And, and, and I think we can answer that by taking a biblical view of origins. Okay, there's the view of design spelled out in Genesis 1. This is what God intended. Then there's the view of disfiguring, Genesis 3. That shows what happened when sin entered into the environment. Now, let me stop right there and say this. God said to Adam and Eve, the human experience is going to contain things that I never meant it to contain. That tells me that we are all born with a sin nature, and our sin natures make us susceptible to certain sins. Now, there are sins that, or I should say sinful tendencies, everybody relates to, and there are some only a minority of people relate to. I believe that's where the inborn component comes in. I don't believe anyone is born gay or lesbian or transgender. I don't buy that at all. But I do think some of us are born with temperaments that made us more susceptible to homosexuality later in life when other environmental things happened. Because look, a lot of eight-year-old boys have been molested by adult men and they did not develop homosexually. Why me? I had a temperament that was more susceptible to that. That could be part of the inborn component and that would lend strength to the inborn theory. But then there's the distortion that came after the disfiguring. The distortion happened when, when a man basically said, I don't want to retain God in my mind. Romans chapter 1, Paul said, even as they did not like to retain God in their mind, God basically gave them up. That's what happened to me in 1978 when God basically said, okay, Joe, that's the way you want to go. That's where you're going to go. And when I decided that my own desires were more important than the will of God, that was when distortion took over. And I adopted a me first mentality with a very hardened heart to go along with my darkened mind. I did not like to retain God in my mind, and the result of that was chaos. I was born with a sin nature which made me susceptible to homosexuality when other variables came into play. I did not have the kind of bond that I should have had with my father. I didn't relate well to my male peers, so I retained a very deep need for male love that went unmet until in my early adolescence I felt a very keen sexualization of that very normal, legitimate need. And yes, Satan was involved in it, seducing me, then condemning me, then confirming me in it. Well, that's what made it happen, in my opinion. I don't think there's any one reason people become homosexual in their feelings. I think it's a constellation of things that come together to create it. Well, that's the problem. What's the solution? That was spelled out when God spoke through Isaiah, Isaiah 55, verse 2. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which will not satisfy? When God called me to repent of homosexual sin, he didn't just call me to repent of the sin. He called me to enter into the health, into the godly intimacy he meant me to have. So why would someone be attracted to the same sex? Well, in general, the sin nature makes us susceptible to a number of sins. The specifics of why some people are attracted and some are not to the same sex, those vary from person to person. The most helpful answer we can give to someone who is asking that question, why am I gay? The best answer is an invitation. I invite you to go back to the source and go back to the plan. Go back to the source of life you've been given. Go back to the plan he intended you to follow. You can't go wrong if you do that. Well, if you are enjoying this podcast, if you'd like to support it, we'd love to have you aligned with us. If you want to invest in this ministry, Cloudfire Ministry, just go to joedallas.com slash giving, joedallas.com slash giving. That'll show you how you can partner with us. Love to have you there. Well, hey, this is Christians in a Cancel Culture. Uh, we're here every Friday. It was good being with you. Look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.